Hello. So, uh, uh, as uh, we have left before, uh, let's now uh, dive into the source code of the project, which I have uh, explained in the earlier video. So, uh, the main thing, let's uh, look at the package of JSON of it, so that we'll know what all we are using. Uh, I'm going to use Firebase for my backend, and also for database. Uh, it is, it makes it a lot of lots easier for me to manage my database and also back and so with that and also real time so that's why i've used it i'm using moment for uh, all my time calculations and uh, displaying uh, react is the front end library i'm using uh, react daytime is uh, a small module for uh, daytime picker react dom for rendering react uh, React scripts is, is I have generated this with a creator at app uh, uh, boilerplate, so it comes with it. And semantic uh, React is, as I've mentioned before, it's a wrapper around semantic UI, so I can use uh, the CSS framework semantic UI without uh, being without having s such a verbosity as you would do in normal CSS. It uh, makes it declarative. So. <coughs> So uh, let's dive into the uh, entry page of this. Uh, I am importing app, so and I'm just in this window index. I'm just uh, importing the app and rendering that to the DOM. So um, here, so here uh, the first this is the app uh, page. And now here basically I am deciding if if uh, the user is authenticated or if it's not if it's authenticated then i'm redirecting him to the dashboard if it's not and i'm asking him to log in so just to look at the firebase console this is the authentication firebase console which i have implemented uh, with just uh, email id password so uh, this is all the users which i've already registered so uh, so I've put a state for it uh, to check if the user of blocked in or not. That is called is authenticated. And so as soon as uh, the component is mounted, I'm calling a function called this dot login. Uh, basically, what it does is it'll see if the user is already logged in or not. If it is logged in, that will that will change the uh, state to true and you know, render again so that it, that can be directed to to the dashboard. And uh, I'm getting this uh, user object from Firebase database, which has um, useful properties such as display name, photo URL, email address, etc., etc. So even that I'm uh, passing it on. Then, uh, if uh, suppose the user is not logged in, I am asking him uh, taking him to this page called uh, login uh, this basically I have uh, implement let's go to the login page and this is the login container so <coughs> it has uh, I'm, I'm using normal uh, forms from semantic UI and I've made it controlled so that I've I've all on change listeners to attach to it and on value attached to it so um, so as soon as I type, type, uh, start typing, it's gonna increment or change the email address and password state over here. And when uh, he clicks, when he clicks submit, that is when he clicks login, uh, I'm running this function called validate input. I'm just checking if my in user input are empty. Uh, if they're empty, I'm throwing the message. If they are not empty, then I'm seeing if the email matches the. Uh, the email rejects uh, this is not uh, really accurate it wouldn't work for all of the emails but uh, right now it does uh, does a decent job at recognizing valid emails uh, and also I'm checking if the password length is less than six and uh, if everything is uh, true uh, then I am I have passed to this 
container login container I have passed in the props so this props is basically this so this is how I'm passing the authenticate props so this I am this function I'm passing it over here as a props uh, this what it does is it'll uh, so whenever the user authenticates and uh, it's everything is valid then I am sending the email and the uh, and the password back so and also I'm sending so this is the uh, this is the function which uh, which actually checks if the user and uh, user is there in the database or not and uh, I'm checking it over here and I'm checking if the, e the email matched or not then if it, everything's correct then this is the props I'm sending it back and I'm as I am sending back as true so after uh, after validating this uh, then I'm sending to this function this function is again uh, checking the file with database then if everything is true and the props I'm sending back as true so it goes back to this function and says yeah you can go ahead and log in so if it is login then I'm setting uh, setting the state as true and because it does a state it enters the component again and if it is true then I'm passing to the page now page is uh, the main container of the whole uh, following pages of my dashboard before that I'm also passing the user user uh, authenticated object uh, as I told you before it has email address and everything and I'm also passing something called user object <coughs> so um, this is uh, something uh, fibers authentication can store email addresses and uh, etc but uh, I would have to again send them back to my database to for them to be hold additional information such as how many subjects they have taken and is he a student or not and etc for that uh, uh, this is where I'm storing the users I'm not storing the password I'm just storing the limiters and uni unique identification numbers so these are the users I'm just storing the last name display name if he's a student or not then his unique address so it makes uh, a lot easier for uh, me to in my app so that uh, he can see user can the dash the component can decide if it is a student and render a different uh, component to that so after this uh, as i told you it goes to the app uh, page so the way i've structured my project is uh, my display uh, logic lies in a file called component and my business logic lies in a file called containers. Uh, the, co the components which can be used anywhere, I've placed them in a separate folder called components. Uh, they mean they are global and they can be used anywhere uh, without any dependency. And pages is where my individual pages are. So, uh, and this page has this one container called pages this is where uh, this is uh, I'm not using react router for this uh, I just wanted to see how to work without react router so uh, I have, I've created a small router myself so uh, I'm not going I'm not using URLs uh, as my routing option but I'm just basing the routing based on my states So I have um, I have uh, these two components uh, already in all my pages. So first is the header component, which are, which you are seeing over here. This header component uh, will uh, render the photo and also the name, and also it ha also has the sign out option. And the sidebar components can has all pages. Uh, let us see what are those. So I'm just uh, rendering a normal menu of the semantic UI and uh, also attaching a drop down so whenever a drop down uh, inside of a drop down I'm clicking sign out 
so i am passing uh, i have passed to the header props called authenticate as uh, which i have seen in app.js so but right instead of here i am passing it false so it's if we go back here so if it is false it's going to do a logout operation and logout will authenticate will uh, log out from the firebase uh, uh, it will send the request to firebase to log out and we are setting the status false so that we don't go to the dashboard the sidebar is similarly this so it has a series of menu items uh, each one have its on click and on active uh, props so each on click uh, on each on click uh, I'm setting which of the menu item was clicked and that particular item uh, item I'm putting the state as active page active page will highlight the current page in my sidebar and also I'm I passed a pro I passed a function called router to this so let us see what this router does So this is a function which I'm passing to my sidebar. So uh, what router does is um, it will check if uh, the default page is dashboard. Right? Uh, I've put that as a state, current page state. So if the current page is different from the changed page, uh, this change page I'm this parameter I'm getting from my sidebar. Okay. So if it is different, then uh, set the set the current page as the new page. So this prop particular prop parameter I'm getting from here. So I'm passing whatever the name was, uh, name of the menu item was clicked. I'm passing it over here, and this will uh, render the page accordingly over here. So if uh, now, now that I have set the state as something other than dashboard, uh, as you can see in my in my render, render method of my pages, I am calling this function called render page, and I am passing the current page value. So it has its just simple switch. So based on the page it was, it will ret return a new uh, different component. So I have this components for dashboard container and explorer container, schedule and ID content. So based th that is how I am. Uh, deciding I'm rendering different pages for it. So this I did uh, just because uh, the requirement was small. Uh, I didn't want to use React Router for that. Uh, I thought let us let us see without uh, React Router can we do can can we pull this out? So um, uh, let, let's go to dashboard because that's the first page uh, user sees after he is logged in. So I have a con this dashboard container. So yeah, before uh, before that, I am passing uh, passing to the dashboard uh, container few props such as. Uh, let's see. Let's look this router. Why I am again passing that? Let, let's see that uh, later on. But I am also passing user object and user auth object. I am passing user auth object because I just uh, on every page I, I want to check if the user is logged in or not. So dashboard container. Um, uh, the main uh, idea was here was to, uh, uh, you know, display the total number of uh, subjects the, uh, the user have taken, and etc. etc. There were a lot of things I uh, plan to do each of you. Um, so um, uh, main thing uh, here uh, again, I'm doing something called dashboard component after doing this. So dashboard component has this class peak. Class peak is nothing but this uh, this particular you know uh, component. Uh, it will have just three or four evenly distributed flex uh, components inside. Um, so right now um, it just says overview and I just hard coded few data over here. And um, now because I have this create class, I would want to uh, perform some action on it. Um, so as you can see, create class is only visible for if the props uh, which are passed is a student. 
he is not uh, he don't he obviously is not in the position to create a class and i'm also rendering a model so when you click class uh, a new class this is the model is being re rendered so the way it does is i have this um, so in my class uh, in my class pick if you see the class pick i think so um, this is the class pick component so the logic each class pick have a small button on the right rightmost end so it will have a non click to that so because i uh, each uh, if i am using this class pick in different context the uh, button action might be different so i am passing that uh, action of the button as props so this dot uh, prop dot action which which i will be passing then and what value would i want to pass it back so the same thing i did for for this particular teachers component so over here i am passing toggle add add new classes so it's going to toggle uh, this is the again a function of pass from the container it's going to toggle the model to show or not show and uh, when i click that it should obviously show so if you see the toggle this is how the toggle looks like so i'm setting the state over here as false before i don't want to show the model as soon as the user lands here and um, when the, the props from the child component becomes false or true that is how i'm controlling this so i i've also not uh, did that redux here because i think i wanted to uh, manage my own state by bringing them to you know top parent this is how i'm doing i'm not uh, setting any states in my component uh, uh, in my component files or any of the other uh, components of sub children of that because i want to manage my own state in my top parent so this is where the state would be this is where the container would actually be a stateful component the other uh, other other than that they can be a functional stateless components uh, so actually it doesn't need life cycle method and etc uh, so um, yeah uh, that's going to um, activate the class for me um, new class is a model again um, because this is a model which which has to manage its own state because I have name and other form uh, inputs here I had to put a state for this so what it does is um, on each on change listener it will add to the state which is there right initially everything will be nothing and um, I have integrated this um, react date picker from a uh, library called react uh, date time so this is really good it will give it gives really gives me a good control over managing the date and time here and um, so when the submit is clicked I am checking I am trimming the name and trimming the description so I am so for the duration and date time uh, takes in a moment object so uh, i had to uh, convert the input which i have received uh, when i click something in my input date time box and convert that to a moment uh, and then i have to because i'm sending that to my server i had to convert the best way to was to convert that to a unix post time so dot value of is a method from moment which will convert that to number of uh, milliseconds elapse from Unix time. Uh, class ID is again the class ID. So <coughs> uh, this is the prop which I'm sending to the getting back, uh, making the whole thing as an object, as a new class, and I'm sending it back. So um, this is being again handled over here. So what it does is, uh, this is the new class which I've received from my model. So uh, this one thing, uh, obviously if uh, the teacher is logged in, he he or she doesn't want to put their own name again and again if they're creating a class. So I have to impend, uh, and append the class teacher's name which I have taken from the logged in user. So uh, because the teacher, I know that it, it it's a teacher who can create a class i'm uh, taking the name from a user object from firebase 
uh, initially because there will be nothing and I would want to have this uh, a property called enrolls obviously uh, it should be zero so this uh, I am um, uh, uh, attaching that to my class I'm saying I'm using the spread operator here to attach to the class so <coughs> the here this is where I'm getting a reference to my firebase uh, node over here the firebase node is classes so so is this and uh, I'm attaching I'm giving the name of uh, each parent node as the name of as the title as class ID so that it's easier for me to in future to uh, go through the limbs again instead of having a random ID and I'm setting that over here so um, this is the main feature I think uh, Dash would have and I think the other things are just in normally pay call okay. so uh, let's look at this um, explore section so if you see uh, my uh, database here so each uh, class has each class has so many objects uh, each object has something called class ID date time description duration and roles name and teacher so let's go look at that so explore container has um, <coughs> an empty state called subjects which is which I would be filling with uh, by taking from my database so uh, as soon as I land to the explore, explore page I want uh, subjects to be filled so I'm doing that in my comprehended mount and putting it as asynchronous operation um, then I'm getting the node reference of of that of Firebase nodes, and then um, I'm getting a value. I'm attaching a, a listener to it, that event listener that will always listen if there are any changes to it. So, so dot value uh, would give me the value of that particular complete object. So, and this is not an array of objects. So I had to first pick each of the of the each of the object out okay and create one empty array and then um, insert that into each insert each object into, a, into an empty array so I do that uh, by running in for statement for uh, loop and um, I add it with the spread operator here then as soon as everything is done I am setting the state as a new array and I'm uh, making the loading as false so this is how it's going to be here if we go so this is how I'm getting all the subjects so you see the I, I think the new subject I got added over your history of before, which I added earlier this, uh, earlier this session and <coughs> and if the now the students obviously uh, the teacher cannot obviously enroll uh, so the student can enroll so let's uh, log in with student ID So yeah, obviously the dashboard student of the student uh, does not contain add new class. It's instead, it has explore all classes. So yeah, um, he can um, view all the classes, and also if he is not enrolled in history of football, for example, he can always enroll to it. So if we go to here and see the database, should be sports, I guess. Yeah, here it is. So yeah, enrolls have this one, and also the same subject would go into the user database too. If you see, the username was Elliot Anderson, and the classes he have attended is sports. Yeah, so here it is. And uh, <coughs> so when the user, let's see what happens when the user clicks enroll button. So when he clicks an enroll button. Uh, obviously I have to send to be able to capture that particular which which sub, uh, which button of that particular card was clicked I have to send the function to my card so uh, I'm sending the this particular function as a props to my explore component explore component has number uh, obviously it has number of cards in it 
Now each card I'm sending that uh, enrolled into a class, a function which I've got from my explore container. So let me see the subject card here. So this is my subject card. Uh, again, status campaign. I don't need a state here. So yeah. So whenever a student clicks enroll, uh, I'm sending the function back, but with a parameter called class ID because class ID will be for that unique for the particular card. So <coughs> uh, as I'm getting the class ID back from my child component, I am uh, five five is has this uh, unique way of uh, referencing the nodes as uh, kind of like URL. So if you would what if you would like to go this particular thing, it gives you a URL called uh, user dot class ID class slashes, you know, slash that class ID. Oh, this is the user ID. Sorry. So the I'm using the same uh, same method here. I'm going to my I'm first getting the class object from the database by going classes slash the class ID. Once when I'm when I'm getting that. I'm getting the object for that particular ID and obviously the enroll has been increased now because you have clicked enroll so I am uh, selecting that particular property called enroll in that and I'm incrementing that and um, this now the new object which I have which I have uh, I have to pass it to to back to my, update it back to my user so I have the uh, I'm attaching the user with the new class uh, the, the the new class object and also I uh, also update that in my classes uh, uh, directory so e it will be updated at both here in the inside the users property called class and also over here okay. um, next word do we uh, schedule so schedule is again um, if you see I have this I have for each uh, student I have its own classes op uh, classes array so I'm just uh, displaying those classes there the schedule if you go container so as soon as my component is uh, uh, mounted I'm getting the user which is logged in over here and uh, slash classes because if the classes are there or not there you will check, check that and then I'm getting I'm putting a reference uh, listener to it I went listener to it uh, mm, and I'm calling the complete class of ob classes object of that user and this is the complete object of object so I had to first convert into an array so for that I loop to them as I did before uh, selectively apply them to my new array and um, get it to my state call and run classes now I'm sending this uh, enrolled classes to my component uh, this is where I'm segregating is it today's classes or is it future's class okay so <coughs> I have two things here this uh, this part is for the this one today's class so uh, what I'm checking is here I'm just first uh, uh, the enrolled classes we can also uh, he can be in the past or can be in the future so first I am filtering that array uh, so I am using this method for a moment called this, this thing. so basically what it does is uh, I have created today's object as here so moment will create a new object uh, of today's date and I am I'm checking if it is the same day as today uh, if I pass day over here it will check for day month and year okay so if it returns true that means uh, irrespective of the time uh, if it is on same date then it will return true and the filter will uh, just contain only the the classes which are which are happening today then I'm sorting them because uh, uh, I obviously want to have the the next upcoming class to be on the front so I'm sorting them with the sort uh, prototype dot sort function so um, I'm passing a sort function here I'm saying class A and class B and whoever 
uh, uh, that both objects dot date and time is where that thing is so if uh, if it is this thing is negative it will uh, if it is positive then this will come this prop this property will come first if it is negative this will come first, second uh, this will come second yeah so uh, now my array is filtered and sorted then i would want to map into it uh, i'm using the same subject card which i've used uh i've not used yeah i've used that in explore yeah so the same subject cards i've used then selectively i'm showing them obviously i'm not i would not want to show the enroll button here so i'm putting that as false here um then um uh for the rest of the classes which are not day on today it's today's date uh, again i'm filtering them uh, but this time i'm using is after today so that i don't show the previous classes so and then i'm sorting them uh, by most recent first then i'm mapping to them Inst instead of putting cards again i, w I think uh, design wise i think it's better to just to have title of them because um, you can always uh, through you can always see which classes today and that uh, makes it more important to have that information first so that's why I put a card here and just a list in my future classes and ID card um, okay, ID card so ID card is just a simple stateless component that will just show me the username, get the username, get the email address, if he's a student or not, if he's a student, he's a student at university, and the uni unique identification number, here we are calling that as a rule number. Okay, uh, with that, I think, um, uh, I would like to conclude this presentation, a few points I would like to uh, include here that uh, uh, given the project uh, complexity we can we can start adding few more libraries and and probably add few state management uh, add state management library or react router and can make it more uh, application more dynamic and um, a few things which are still I can still do it over here is I can on each on mount of the object I can uh, detach the event listeners and I can uh, probably make this more dynamic by showing just what is the next upcoming class and I mean we can uh, integrate uh, um, a lot of uh, a lot of features in this uh, in this particular application uh, but yeah uh, I hope you understand all of this and uh, thank you for your time